the BKA, the German Federal Police in Wiesbaden. For six years, the agency is run by a man integral to its inception, Paul Dickopf. A top civil servant with a seemingly clean record, he claims he opposed the Nazis. Until 1971, during Willy Brandt's time as Chancellor, he is the top criminologist in West Germany. Anyone who criticized him or posed any kind of threat to him was never allowed to forget it. He held a grudge and destroyed such people. Dickhoff doesn't only forge a career for himself in West Germany. In 1968, he becomes head of Interpol. It's now his job to fight crime on an international scale. When Dickhoff left, Genscher, who was interior minister at the time, held him up as an example to police all over Germany. After Dickhoff's death in 1973, staff researching files to compile his obituary make an astonishing find. They turn up documents outing Dickhoff as a staunch Nazi. His lifelong lie finally comes to light. Dickhoff was not only a member of the SS and a Nazi spy. Shortly before the end of the war, he switched sides to start working as an agent for the Americans. Numerous CIA documents give an insight into the work of Caravel, which was Dickhoff's CIA codename. The highest ranking member of the German police sold confidential information from the Bonn government. Chancellor Willy Brandt and his Ostpolitik was of particular interest to the Americans, and Dickhoff readily provided the information. As did many other Nazis during the Cold War. They became willing helpers, spies, because American intelligence services used their pasts to blackmail them. The Americans were never very bothered if the people they needed had close ties to mass murderers or extremists or terrorists. The ends justified the means. American intelligence services faced a new enemy, communism. The US enlisted former Nazis as spies. There was no attempt to punish them for their war crimes. 